Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined, as always, by my co host Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. However, today we have an extra special co host, Riddle Singh, our India ambassador at Bit Refill. And in addition to the extra special co host, we are also interviewing Anuj Gupta, a cryptocurrency tax specialist, knowledge person based in India. Uh, so Anuj, tell us a bit about you, your experience, and how you got into cryptocurrency. Seems like a good place to kick off. Hi, guys. Thank you, first of all, for having me here. Uh, so we are in the crypto space from last three years in India, and we are trying to help the people that how the tax would be applicable on the crypto gains because in, uh, the, the cryptos are, have gained a boom in India, and lots of people have a tendency to not to pay their taxes. So we are helping them that there are the taxable events and you have to pay the taxes, guys. That's we are here to help them. Anuj, what's the state of crypto right now? Are they banning it or is it legalized now? Um, I know India has flip-flopped a bunch of times on, on where they stand. So uh, they are not banning it and they haven't, uh, I would say, legalized it because up, up to the like latest uh, like development from the government side, they have said that they haven't legalized it it yet but they haven't they have given the recognition because they are not banning it because in the last november we are seeing that uh, there are the rumors that if you're holding a crypto so then you can see a jail time there so now putting up the taxes doesn't mean that they are legalizing it but definitely they are not going to put a ban on it and i would say putting a taxes on it is a positive move uh, because they are like doing a recognition for the cryptos currencies. I say, what actually is that? Because I saw something about the tax being 30%. And I saw something about another 1% tax up to a certain amount um, or something like that. What do we, what is the, I, it may be quite a complex question for me to ask you, but I guess like what's the general capital gains tax going to gonna uh, be? So the thing is, that's a two different issues, which we are, you have mentioned at 30% and 1%. So the capital gain taxes would be the 30%. And 1% is a transaction tax. That means every time you transact, uh, you uh, the buyer have to deduct a 1% uh, one percent of a transaction fees for the from the seller. And 1% has to uh, deposit it to the government. So that is just, uh, just killing the liquidity that we can talk about later. But uh, on and whole, the 30% taxes would be there on the gain, which we have gained from the crypto assets. And it's, so we've also had a bit, you know, a bit of uh, rumors around this area that 30% tax is going to be applicable on crypto in general. It's so the rumor is that let's say if you buy Bitcoin at 40 and you sell it at 20, you still need to pay 20, 30, 30%. Is, is there any truth to it? Like, is that seriously happening? Are there taxes on loss as well? Uh, no, uh, that is uh, like a wrong, I would say, uh, wrong rumors which are going around in India. There's a no mm -hmm. loss taxes. The thing is only when you have a profit, then you have to pay the taxes on a 30%. Like you mentioned Kay, that you have purchased on a 40 and you sold in on a 20. The loss of a 20 will now mm -hmm. be like gone. You can't carry it, out, carry it forward to the next year. The only thing you can okay. do if you have a gain, you can set it off, but then that 20, the loss, if you have the only loss that is gone in this year, earlier, you can carry it out, carry it forward to the next year. And you can like set it off with the profit if you have in the next year, but now you have to like uh, waved it off. So by set off, do you mean, do you mean something like, um, let's say somebody is in a loss of 20,000 in Bitcoin. And uh, they have an they have a monthly income as well, right? So you have to pay your yearly taxes as well. So let's say mm -hmm. your total income for the year is twenty thousand, and then your loss at twenty thousand on cryptocurrencies. Does so? What you're saying is you still have to pay your tax on the total earning. It's not yeah. going to be offset, right? right? It's not like the my earning becomes total zero, so I have to pay zero taxes. Exactly. Uh, now uh, they have specifically mentioned that because now the what government has introduced the crypto mm -hmm. uh, assets as a digital, virtual digital assets. So now it is ex uh, specifically as a different class of asset, virtual digital asset. 
so now it is not being offset by any other class of income which you have like any other class like okay. you have a, a gain in a stock market you have mm -hmm. a gain in any other kind of a regular business like you have a garment business or any other kind of a business so you have a gain in that and you have a loss in crypto assets so you can't set it off against that incomes and moreover if you have a loss you can't take it uh, carried it forward to the next year which you can do generally for all other class of a business yeah do you think the 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 newly recently introduced crypto tax laws in india is a bit excessive i mean come on 30% um like what do you think are in the minds of the indian you know financial authorities when they were formulating these laws do you think it will it will it's going to be set in stone like this or the improvement or the improvements we will see you know improvements on this law in the future or you know it's going to be this way for a very long time uh, i would say jerry uh, 30% yeah it is like the highest bracket that we can see in india the 30% is the highest thing uh, like uh, the answering that we can see the drop in the taxes uh, i can't say that because now uh, like from the latest uh, development from the government the government is saying that tax can be increased because they are in india they are comparing the crypto as in the fee uh, uh, i would say the gambling so in a like like casinos and the gambling so that is why they have put the 30% taxes and apart from the 30% of the taxes they haven't allowed any kind of an expense that can be adjusted so we are as a community we are making a representations to the government ki that the tax law should not be like this because that is a very uh, i would uh, say ki the tax laws are not friendly with the investors and the traders so we are making a representation i would say ki we can see a drop in the 30% but yes we can see other changes like uh, allowing of an expenses and all we can see a, a little bit of a changes but not on the dropping of a taxes um part of my ignorance i'm not familiar with the taxes in india yeah of is, does it does it does this same law apply to because i i remember you mentioned you know they they are likening crypto trading to gambling which is absurd obviously but is it is this does this apply to you know forex uh, stocks trading does the same law do they also see forex stock trading as gambling because i saw an article where they did not you know really use the word cryptocurrency but does the same you know logic apply uh, no uh, the the i would say the forex or the commodity and the stocks are completely regulated differently they have the different laws uh, laws against that and the tax rates are also favorable like i would say uh, if i have invested in a shares and i have a short term capital gain which means that i have invested for less than an year then there's a 15% of a tax rate and if it is a long term capital gain like if we have invested for more than an year then the tax rate uh, would be like a zero up to the 1 lakh 1 lakh rupees so they uh, like india is i would say the government is pressurizing to invest more in the stocks uh, uh, rather than a cryptos because they are saying that that is a, just like a volatility is too much and that is not good for the economy hey so speaking about the government uh, basically pushing to invest into stocks as well so there are some rumors about uh, a cryptocurrency or the digital currency being introduced by the government itself next year yeah they have introduced uh, they have like uh, i would say they have uh, proposed it okay, that they are going to issue just like a, a central bank digital uh, currency just like a china uh, we can like we can see the issue of this in 2023 let's see okay, that how the things going to come up and we can hope for the best okay, that after that they are going to recognize other currencies uh, as mm -hmm. a like but that the currency which they are going to issue that will have a legal tender but the cryptos which we have generally now that is going to be an asset that is going to be defined as an assets not a currency that is for sure so what is the usual tax on okay that's just capital gain tax on assets right then the thing is ki that now i would say the flat, the there's a flat 30% tax rate so it uh -huh. doesn't matter whether you classify it as a capital assets or you can take it as an income the on the gain you have to pay the 30% of a taxes no allowing of any kind of an expenses so even if you can treat it as a business income you can't allow 
or you can't offset any kind of an expenses against your income. So it is like, I would say flat 30%. And we have already make a representation. We are just in a process of making a representation to the government. Mm -hmm. that what is the treatment of a commission brokerage that, uh, or the gas fees, I would say that mm -hmm. uh, the index changes are going to be charged to us because they have uh, the definition which they have introduced is only like the cost of acquisition. They haven't uh, right. defined the definition of cost of acquisition. Cost of acquisition is generally means the cost of assets, right? So uh, there's still the clarity pending from the government, whether the commission on the brokerage is allowable expense or not. So what I was reading up is there's going to also going to be a concept of GST introduced on any trades coming up. So 30% would be applicable for any exchange, which is currently in India, right? If you're trading right. on foreign exchanges, then um, then I think there would still be a, some GST imposed. Yeah. So uh, the, like uh, just to gather the other uh, hosts. So GST yeah. is the indirect taxes, which we okay. have to pay on the transactions. Okay. So government is trying to impose as many as the taxes on the cryptos. Till now, what is the rule of the GST? The GST has to pay on the transaction fees. Let's suppose on the commission or the gas fees. Like mm -hmm. let's suppose in India, if we have like Vazirx, Coin DCX, or any other kind of an exchange, I'm not promoting any exchanges, uh, like any of the exchanges. So mm -hmm. if there are any charging of a commission fees on the commission part, they have to charge a GST and they are doing that. That we know. But if we are transacting with the foreign exchanges like Binance. So I don't know how to comply with that because that is the main thing that the government has to put a clarity that how the GST on that gas fees has to be paid. But still, it is a long road that have to be comply for the GST. But if it has to be done, then we have to make uh, like, we don't know that how to make that comply with our clients because that is lot, going to be the hell lot of a task because nobody has the information. So just, just to, you know, because looking at Jerry and Lawrence, I'm like, they're pretty confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So just to, um, you know, sum it up, it's basically like what the proposal is. If you're trading on a foreign exchange, 30% is your flat crypto tax. And then on top of that, you pay an indirect tax of another 22%. Uh, 18%. 18%, but not on the gain, only on the part of a gas fees. The GST has to be paid only on the part of a gas transaction fees, fees right? Transaction yeah. fees or like commission on the brokerage, whatever you say. I personally, uh, this, uh, this is a little hard to take, especially if, if I was Indian, I'd be pretty pissed. Um, obviously, <laughs> it's it. it, it I'm looking at video and I'm really like thinking, oh man, if I, you know, if I probably 10x on this coin, I'm going to have to give the government like 18%. Oh shit. Like, wow. Why do I have to ever do that? But uh, how, how do you think this impacts, you know, you know, businesses that are built on crypto? Like obviously the exchanges and um, other platforms that are built on crypto. How have you spoken to them? How do you, you know, what is their sentiment? You know, how do they feel about this new, you know, regulation? Uh, I would say the exchanges are a little bit, uh, that is the welcome move though, because government is recognizing now the crypto assets. Like I, uh, like I already told in the November, like, uh, in India, there was a, like a news of a complete ban and, uh, we can see a jail time. Now the government is recognizing it. Although they have put, they have to like put the crypto asset into the gambit of a Texas, which they have done. So the, what the exchanges are doing, they are making a representation that laws should be like a user friendly law, not should be a draconian law. So that 30% and the 18% and 18% GST is a fair enough. I would say in the Forex or in a commodity or in a share market or in the stocks, there is 18% GST because that is on only on the transaction values. I would say on the uh, brokerage or the commission which the exchanges charge, not on the part of the profit. So 18, but the catch here is correct. How you will calculate it? Because like, if I'm in India, 
and I'm like transacting with the Binance, KuCoin, Gate.io, and any other kind of international exchanges. So, uh, like, uh, uh, I would say sharing of an information from the international exchanges is very difficult. And I don't know how the government will put to uh, cap this thing into the GST on a tax gambit. That is the thing we are just waiting for the government for the clarity. But uh, as the part of our exchanges, the exchanges are very ha happy that they are recognizing it and we can see the more of the exchanges are coming in India. The more of an international exchanges that we are in talk one of two, they're also like coming to India because now the India is adopting it though with a higher tax rate, but India is like adopting. For stocks and other uh, like Forex, you mentioned short-term capital gains have, have one tax rate and then long-term, which is like longer than a year has a different tax rate. Do, do crypto assets have the same kind of short and long-term tax differential? No, uh, the crypto taxation doesn't have any kind of a period of holding. It is just flat 30% on any gain, whether it is a one rupee or if it is like a one crore. no bifurcation on that. Sounds very much to me, just like the Indian government's not really a big fan of cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. feel like these recommendations are going to be given and they're going to go, thanks for your recommendations, but we're not going to pay attention to it because it just, it, 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 it all screams that, okay, we want people to invest in stocks and shares because that's going to help the local economy better than crypto where the money can leave and enter the country at will. Um, and they probably want to bring out their own CBDC coin anyway. So why do they want to encourage everyone buying decentralized coins well bitcoin and then sort of semi-decentralized cryptocurrency coins i guess you'd call it um so i suppose something i was thinking about is if you're if you're an individual obviously as you said you've got to declare your purchases your trades essentially you pretty much have to declare everything and pay percentages on everything it seems like um but if you're a business owner and you want to accept bitcoin or another cryptocurrency uh in exchange for goods uh, like whether it be online or in store do you have to do anything like obviously you're going to have to declare i suppose any capital gains if you get the bitcoin and sell it um but do you have to do it like is it on is the onus on you or the person paying to do this one percent tax and this tax on the transaction fee like okay. what, what, uh, what, so what? so uh what does the like one percent transaction fees is like it is like a withholding i would say it is a withholding tax so Every time when a buyer or the purchaser purchases a Bitcoin, they have to deduct a 1% of a transaction. Like uh, I've given an example, like if I am uh, purchasing a 1 lakh of an INR uh, worth of like a uh, Bitcoin from any of the seller, then I have to deduct a 1%. That means a 90, 99,000 of an INR worth of Bitcoin I can purchase and a 1000 worth of INR is the withholding that I have to deposit against the seller account that can be offset later on while paying the taxes. So every time when I'm transacting again and again and again, so my capital would be like depreciating because in every transaction, like if I'm starting with the one lakh of an capital, or I would say 1 million, 1 million INR. So every time I have to deduct a 1%. So on a compounding, on a compounding manner, if I would say I have made a 300 transactions, my capital, I would say 50% will be depleted. This is That is very a good. very draconian uh, provisions for the trader. And we seriously don't know how to comply with that because every time, uh, the thing is, if it is a P2P transaction, peer-to-peer, -peer, then we have an information of an another person from whom we are buying it. But if it is a like a decentral exchanges or I would say Binance or in any kind of international exchanges, we don't have an information or I would say Indian Indian exchanges also, if I'm buying by any Indian exchanges, Wazir X, Coin DCX, then I don't have information of the seller. Then I don't know how it is, has to be compliant. That is why the applicability date of this is from 1st July, 2022. It is still, I would say four months are here. So the government are working it, get it, how to comply with that. And they are just putting up the regulations. Let's say hypothetically, I made like 80 grand on Wakanda Inu. How would I go about filing to pay my taxes? Uh, 80,000 into 30%, 24,000 grand. See, 
And then what and, happens if you get wrecked on Wakanda? <laughs> <laughs> on the rig on the scam they are not going to like uh, leave you bro <laughs> jerry jerry you're not safe bro i think bro. obviously jerry man that we can't you know yeah you, you better be thankful you're not in india um i guess is there is there any way and obviously i, I you know i'm not going to encourage tax evasion here but is there any way that someone can legally do small things to not like, you know what I mean? Like, I guess obviously do less transactions is number one, right? Like that's the obvious one. Uh, mm -hmm. Like if you're going to make a big purchase, if you're going to like send money to a friend or whatever, and I don't know, say they're buying lots of stuff and you're going to pay them back in crypto, try and do it in one lump sum. Um, uh, so less transactions is one thing. Is there anything else that you can see that someone can do to like reduce their tax fairly? Like, you know, not, um, not, not illegally at all. Uh, no, till now, like I would say, the laws which we have, the proposed law is going to be applicable from 1st April 2022. So up to that, we are saying that uh, till 31st March 2022, you can like offset or you can do any kind of an expenses and you can treat it as a business income and you can say that you can offset your expenses with your gain. But after 1st April 2022, any gains, you have to pay the flat 30%. Either you have received any kind of a uh, crypto from your friends that is also a taxable because any gift now they have introduced a one more thing, any gifts received above 50,000 INR that is going to be taxable until it is like uh, received from your siblings, mother, father, brother, sisters, that is exempt. But your friend, you specifically said that is going to be taxable in the hands of a receiver. So they are going to put taxes on each and every ambit. They are going to put a very strict things around you. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, um, really, so it's not, yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like if you're in India, just try and find yourself a partner abroad, become a tax resident <laughs> abroad. And like, just the just people are planning. This. So, so you see that, Lawrence, if, if you send me money and, and you want it back, you're going to get 30% less. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you will get a 70% of it. That's uh, shocking. Yeah, I think it's fair to say I'm not a massive no, 60, fan of uh, Maybe this. not even 70, like 68%, 1% on every transaction. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kind of, this law is, uh, it's like, I was going to ask anyway, because um, I think it's like, we were, you know, at the verge of, you know, in India, you know, cryptos are the verge of being banned. Then all of a sudden, there was this news like, oh, it's like, you know, we are, you know, just going to tax it instead. It felt like, you know, since you guys are so insistent, or, you know, on gambling that, you know, we're going to make the, you know, environment as hostile as, you know, as it can be. So how can you, if, if you have, you know, information there, can you please explain how, you know, you guys went from banning to taxing in like, you know, a blink of an eye, like how did that, you know, happen? Who, do you have idea pro um, crypto people in the government or, you know, in the financial agencies that, you know, how did this whole thing unfold? Jerry, uh, the thing is that the, rum the banning and the rumors are just the rumors from, I would say, the news agencies and anything. There was no official statement any time from the government that they are going to put a ban on it and any kind of a thing. The thing is that, uh, like in India, we have a parliament session on every quarter. So the thing is that media in India, the media agencies are like that they are going to be the law for the banning of a bill that is going to be put in the parliament session, which is going to be happen. But there is no official statement of any kind of a government. So there are all the other rumors, but government are always saying okay, that they are discussing that how to regularize it with the crypto influencers or with the exchanges, that how to put a regulations, how to put a text on it. Like you see okay, that all over the globe, the go all, of the go all over the globe, the government is still struggling to put a text frame. Like if you see on the Russia side, firstly, they are going to put a ban on it. Now they are put a regulation on it. So I would say that whole, the, uh, the story is the same all over the globe. Okay, that firstly, they are trying to put a uh, like ban on it. And there's this certainly because they can't, if they put a ban on it, then you can see the whole of a thing in a gray market. Or uh, I would say that in an illegal way, because people are not going to stop it. 
and in india if you see and if you ask mridul there was a like uh, crazy people are crazy about this you can see the polygon is from india uh, and in india i would say there was a so much of nft the bollywood uh, i would say uh, the bollywood stars uh, the heroes of india uh, so they are introducing in the nfts very frequently so uh, the government is also knows ki that putting a ban on it is not a solution that will also and if they put a ban on it so they will promote the illegal or i would say the gray market that is a way that is the only reason they have put a taxes on it and they are still try to put a regulation and they have like uh, put a regulation and they are uh, i would say ki they uh, they they just need a time that how to put a regulations and like all of the government are demanding it you can see a example of a thailand okay that thailand like uh, and russia also that from the banning and like from the regularizing it and india is uh, like following the same thing i would say um i've got a question regarding the tax so this is the thing i think it's my last one regarding you know getting my head around it and i guess for respect of a listener as well if you if i buy bitcoin i'm going to buy a whole bitcoin and it's going to triple in price in a year um when i come to do my tax return which i assume is done annually in india i'm guessing i mean it's done annually in yeah so the tax return is done annually and i've got a 3x gain but i haven't sold it i'm just sat there with it do i have to pay any tax on my unrealized gain or is it just if i then sell it back into to rupees how's that how's that work so lauren that's a very good question the lot of a people have like this kind of a uh, like a uh, misunderstanding you don't have to pay anything until you sold that is just a notional profit that you have so you don't have to pay anything until you sold understood and then i guess the second question on that so i understand so i don't have to pay unless i sell now if i sell that bitcoin into usdt um that's one thing right if i sell that bitcoin into fiat into rupees that's another thing do i have to pay tax if i sell it or, or trade it into another crypto asset other than that one percent tax or do i not have to pay that is it is it only like you know is the tax kind of like a tax in and out of crypto as a whole or is it in and out of each cryptocurrency right if you swap between any of the crypto so that is a taxable event the taxable event doesn't means that if you convert your crypto into the fiat in india the people lot have a lot of have a misunderstanding that we have to pay the taxes only when we convert our crypto into the fiat no that is a wrong thing whenever you convert whenever you swap your crypto into the crypto like usdt is also a crypto whenever we say whenever you we talk to any of the persons then we said usdt it is a crypto it is not a usd dollar so whenever you swap from one currency to another currency that is a taxable event you have to pay the taxes on it let, let me let me just and let me just question again on that um so assuming you know you bought one bitcoin like lauren let's just go with lauren's example he buys one bitcoin it becomes three bitcoin now and now with that three bitcoin he's trying to buy ethereum right mm-hmm. so whatever it converts to is he going to be does he need to pay 1% tax on that three three bitcoins or does he need to pay 30% tax to convert that, it to ethereum not usdt no. not inr just ethereum okay so the 1% tax i i just want to clarify 1% tax is not the tax it is just like a withholding or i would say the advanced tax tds right tds okay. right uh, okay. i would say in the us we have like a tds in india and in the if we convert into the us then it is known as a withholding taxes and okay. in, so that is i am using the word withholding so it is just a withholding it is not a taxes whenever you are okay. going to file your return that the amount of a 1% is going to be adjusted with your net tax liability either if your liability is more than the whatever which are whatever you have paid then you have to pay more and if it is less then you get the refund so first of all 1% is not a tax it just like a okay. withholding or i would say advance tax so answering back to your question so if you have a one uh, one btc and you're converting it you're swapping it to the ether so that is a taxable event and you have to pay the taxes on whatever like uh, the base usdt so 
if you swap from Bitcoin to Ethereum, you immediately lose 30% of your portfolio, right? Right, exactly. So that how is, would this work? That like, is crazy. If I wanted to, if I wanted to like say I had some Bitcoin and I wanted to buy Ethereum with it so I could send it to a DeFi platform where it's converted to a different token so I could buy on like PancakeSwap or Uniswap or something. Um, like how would this, like a multi-conversion transaction like that work? So uh, if I talk about, because they are the tools available in the market, which will help you in calculating your taxes. Okay. So whatever will be the tax, whatever will be the gains in the net, you have to pay the 30% uh, gains on that. And if you talk about that, how the one person would be apply when you like, uh, like changing and crossing it, swapping it to the different exchanges, that is still the question we are raising it to the government. And we need the clarity from the government. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, since we are in this uh, aspect of you know, taxing, um, I work in customer support for peer refill, and I've had this come across this, you know, this um, questions a couple of times, especially since um, India went, you know, both of Bitcoin. Um, they said, they asked, you know, if, you know, I buy gift cards with Bitcoin or any other crypto, um, do they have to, you know, do they report that you know to the tax authorities or because Ricardo you know did mention that if you and everybody has been mentioned that if you you know go through these hoops of converting to different you know cryptocurrencies you know you did mention they are going to be taxed so if they take that bitcoin and not sell and convert you know to gift cards gift cards isn't it isn't technically selling it you just i don't know how will that work is this taxable huh. So the thing is, yes, it is taxable because how the law has been defined. So I'll tell you, so uh, that is just for the listener of an India. So the thing is how they have defined for uh, the every transfer is taxable. Okay. So how the word transfer is not defined till yet for the cryptocurrencies. Okay. So transfer means here. Now the rumor is in India. When you transfer from one exchange, from your one wallet to another wallet, that also leads to the taxable event. But as per our understanding, that is not a taxable event. If you are transferring from your one wallet to another wallet, that is, we have just, it's our understanding. And that is because if the Indian government intends to put a taxes, like if we are, I'm transferring from my Vazirex to Binance and they have concluded it is a taxable event, that is against the principle of a natural justice. And although the clarity is still pending from the government, but it, uh, the trans, uh, the transfer here is the keyword. So transfer here means like in your example, if you are transferring your cryptos to your wallets or do the gift card, then it is a taxable event. So whatever would be the price of that uh, gift card is like the difference will be the tax. The government is not going to leave you for anything. So up to 31st March, 2022, whatever, like, uh, whatever our clients have purchased from the, like any of the gift cards and all, we can treat it as expenses or the business expenditure till 31st March, 2022. But after 31st March, 22, from the 1st April, 2022, that all is a taxable and whether they have purchased any kind from any of the things, uh, no expenses would be allowed. No offsetting of the expenses. I mean, for certain people like, you know, really people who earn crypto, how would they, you know, live on crypto if this is, you know, the law? It's, it's like, it's, I don't, I don't actually, I, I want to believe that, you know, the government is trying to, you know, regulate and, you know, acknowledge the existence of cryptocurrencies, but how would exactly work? For most people who you know work in crypto, how would they live if they want to buy gift cards? They have to, to pay taxes for each time they wanted to refill that you know top of their mobile phones. They would have to report that to the government and pay taxes on it. Because the thing is that government does still now they don't have a like a mechanism or like uh, I would say the technology to like tackle because the whole of the crypto is the concept is a decentralization. And what our government, or I would say the globally that put a centralized kind of a thing. So that is why they are not promoting it, but like our uh, finance minister, I would say the government has put a thing because that is their sovereign right to put a taxes on it. So they haven't uh, made legalized the cryptos, but they have put a taxes on it. 
so they still now they are not promoting it okay, that you have to use a crypto or you should use a crypto then now the government is saying okay, that the crypto should, they are not encouraging it because that is so volatile and they there are the official statements from the government okay, that still it can be banned like they are the two agencies one is the like a central bank i would say central bank of india which is the reserve bank of india and one is of the finance ministers the ministry of finance so they both have a different view the ministry of finance have put a taxes on it but the reserve bank of india because the banks have a very much a stake because if we are transacting with the cryptocurrencies then bank will be at a loss so according to the bank central bank of india that cryptocurrency should be banned so people like like in russia if you can see in russia also the the central bank have a different view and the like ministry of finance has a different view so that is why uh, like president putin had like put it um, between the them and just trying to put a regulation in it so in the same way i would say in india they are trying to put a regulation but they are discouraging it till yet they are not saying they are not encouraging the people to invest in a crypto or anything like that how is this impact like the peer to peer otc markets and like telegram groups where people are just selling directly to each other uh i would say yeah so that is the main thing because uh, if they are they're selling uh, they, if they are selling directly to each other so this is just like a decentralized wallet if i have if i have a metamask and you have a metamask then i can sell directly to you the government doesn't able to know okay, that how the transactions are flowing so that is why the and it is all going in the gray market so that is why the government is trying to put a ban on it or uh, government is trying to put a taxes on it so till now the government indian government doesn't have any kind of an infrastructure or any kind of a mechanism to track all kind of a transaction so till now it is a voluntary disclosures from the sesi that whatever they want to show they can show because if they caught then there will be the heavy penalty to them uh, what's to stop someone from just seeking out like opportunities for regulatory arbitrage and just trading outside of india on another exchange like for instance binance or or in the us like kraken and then just not reporting anything to the indian government uh i would say uh, if we are if we are doing the arbitrage so then arbitrage uh, like many of the clients are doing the arbitrage between the wazirx and the binance so because one part is in india i would say one leg of the wazirx is in india so the government is trying to put a like uh, regulation on it but yes you are correctly defined that if i am doing the arbitrage between the binance and uh, the kraken or the gate or any ku coin so the government doesn't able to know any kind of a thing although whenever i open an account they are demanding a kyc but i don't see any kind of a like exchanges that they are going to comply with the indian laws because they are not physically or they don't have any kind of a company which is in india so it is very hard to track these kind of a thing and people like uh, people are doing some like shit around them so i guess realistically what i can tell from this is i mean first off i'm not a fan of the taxes that are being imposed in india so i don't really like it I, that was kind of obvious from the get-go um and i guess the second thing is to me it feels like the best thing you can really do if you're someone who has conviction when it comes to bitcoin and crypto is just to stack sats i mean if you because it doesn't it doesn't look like you're getting taxed that much on buying the bitcoin like you just get that transactional tax and if you don't sell it into any other cryptocurrency, they can't do anything. So just stack it and just hope for the best. I mean, it's not normally the advice I'd usually give. So I, I, I like buying Bitcoin, but I also like spending it. But it feels like in this case, the smartest move if you're someone who is really into crypto and Bitcoin and, and has a conviction and belief is to just keep stacking it and don't spend it. It seems to be the, which is the opposite of the advice I usually would give. A lot of advice, but opposite of the opinion I usually have around creating a circular economy. But that sounds like the best option. I mean, am I wrong in that one? Uh, if you still want to be involved in Bitcoin, because as I say, you don't get taxed on unrealized gains. So if you just buy Bitcoin or, or, or if you're really into, I don't know, Wakanda Inu, <laughs> for example, 
just stack that and then uh, don't don't sell it, then that seems like the best option to me, as far as I can tell, until maybe India decides to change its mind in a couple of years' time and be less draconian, potentially, fingers crossed, touch wood. Yeah. Is, is mining going to be a taxable event as well? Yeah, the mining is going to be a taxable event. But uh, the cost of acquisition for the mining is still yet to be defined from the India, from the Indian government, because okay. as till now, the government has said that that cost of acquisition minus the cost of sale. So in the mining, we have a cost of a sale, the transfer amount when the miner would sell their mm -hmm. uh, like Bitcoin. But for mining, the cost of the cost of acquisition would be like electricity, their capital, oh, yeah. uh, their, their capital expenditure, yeah. like on the laptops, on whatever. So how that will be treated? That is the question that we are making a representations. So mining is a taxable event, but what is the cost of ac acquisition for the miners? That's still yet to be defined. All right. And when you said conversion from one currency to another is taxable, that is not applicable in the case of loss, right? Uh, so let's but, let's okay yeah. let's or if it's just constant let's say um let's just talk in stables usdt and usdc okay they're mm -hmm. both cryptos so you convert 1000 usdt to usdc you need to pay 30 percent tax you lose 300 out there uh, i would say no uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for like, uh, like we are coming back to the example. The thing is that we don't have to pay uh, like on the 300. We have to pay only on the differential on the gain part. Like if we have, I would say you have purchased a thousand USDT. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it has become 1100 USDT. Okay. And mm -hmm. you are, so, uh, and you are selling 100, uh, 1100 USDT. So on the 100 USDT, because your gain is 100 USDT. Okay. On the 100 USDT, you have to pay a 30%. That means effectively the 30 USDT, you have to pay the taxes. Okay. So coming back to that example, right? Let, let's just, let's just take it for the sake of numbers. Okay. Let's yeah. say one Bitcoin is equal to 10 Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. So Jerry started off with one Bitcoin and <laughs> let's just, it's just a representation. <laughs> Jerry starts off with one Bitcoin. Okay. Now, he has three bitcoins, so he has a profit of two. Okay. Yep. Now those three bitcoins he converts into 30 Ethereum. Okay. Okay. Those 30 Ethereum, the profit was basically two bitcoins, so he has to pay a tax of 30% on the two bitcoins, right? Right, exactly. Okay. Now Ethereum, let's say, falls down in price. And now mm -hmm. for that 30 Ethereum, he only gets back one Bitcoin. Okay. So, so the thing is, huh, yeah, he started out with one, he did hmm. a series of trades and he came back to one. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, does he need to pay tax overall on that transaction? Because the profit value is still zero. So the thing is that middle, uh, like the, we have to see that uh, how, when we are transacting, what's the prices? Because now we are only, uh, saying in the quantity one bitcoin or i would say 10 ethereum we have to let's talk let's just on say the... the price is stable let's say he started off with forty thousand dollars and he's back to forty thousand after doing this whole series of trades so i would say if it is in the one year i'm talking about in india so if it is in a like in an right. year so you don't have to pay any kind of a taxes because your profit is going to offset with the loss i'm saying that if the whole series of event is in one year one financial year, then you don't have to pay the Jerry don't have to pay any kind of a taxes, but if it's split into two years, mm -hmm. let's supposingly, if you had a profit mm -hmm. in one year and you had a loss in uh, next year, then he is going to lose the capital. You have to pay the taxes on the profit. And in the next year, when you have a loss, then it has been gone. So overall, if I, if I get the whole gist of it is that your taxes are going to be 30% on your realized gains. Okay. Right. And, and, or it will also be a tax on unrealized gains when the financial year ends. No, the taxes on the unrealized gain is never going to be like coming back okay. to your example. When you have, like, let's suppose uh, you have transferred from one BTC to three BTC, you have gained it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
so now you have gained in one financial year okay mm -hmm. but then from the three btcs you have purchased uh, 30 ether in one financial year and now in the second financial year you are uh, from the 30 ETH, you have purchased one btc because you have a loss right right or yeah. i would say uh, you have a loss so in one financial year you have again you have to put a taxes you have to pay the taxes on that but in next financial year when you have a loss then there is no like offsetting you don't have offsetting of a profit and you can't okay. carry forward your loss to the next year so probably you may have a loss or you have may have a profit in the third year like so you can offset your loss so that is the restriction the government has put yeah, so that's what i was coming back to basically because it by the end of the first year okay so i went from one bit let's say jerry went from one bitcoin to three bitcoins okay but he hasn't sold it anywhere so does he need to give a 30 percent tax no by that year end no, no. right it is no. only when he sells it right when he swap it right and the swap can be anything it could be a future it could be another crypto it could be a stable correct exactly but if he ends up being at the same value by the end of the year when he actually has to do the entire calculation at that point of time that is when the entire profit realization is counted right right Okay. Okay. That makes a bit of sense. So why, to, why do you have to use me as a red guy, bro? I mean, <laughs> I'm just using it for you, man. Like, you know, if you end up buying, if you end up with profits on Wakanda, you need, you're safe. Why, people, why do I have to be the red guy? <laughs> Well, no, we're not saying that you do have any Wakanda, you know, or that you've ever bought or sold any Wakanda, you know, it's just an example. <laughs> no, man, I don't want to be right, but like, you know, why, why do I have to be the guy? You know, Lawrence is probably the me. You know, he brought Ripple. You know, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, man. Don't know what you're saying. There are too many Inus, uh, I would say, in the market. Uh, the Floki, Kitty, there are too many Inus after the Shiba. Yeah, many Inus. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the downfall of this cryptocurrency market. <laughs> right. Hey, but why? one, okay, one last, one last question. Yep. Um, does your current year loss set off for the current year profit? Basically, um, you you make a you make a bad trade. Okay, mm -hmm. let's let's just use an example. You start off with ten thousand dollars. You make a good trade. You convert it into fifty thousand. But by the end of the year, you make another bad trade, and it's back to ten thousand. That means taxes to be paid is zero. Zero. Or is it still okay. no? The taxes is zero. Okay, that's. So till now, what sense. our uh, till now what our understanding is the same that you can offset your losses from the crypto with the gain from the crypto. That okay. offset is allowed. If that doesn't allow, that is against the principle of natural justice. But you can't offset your crypto losses with any other kind of a uh, like profits, any other kind like stocks or any other kind of a business income that you have a regular, you can't offset that losses from any other kind of a profit. And the key thing, uh, like I'm adding one thing, like mm -hmm. the transfer of, like the definition of a transfer here, till now the transfer definition is unclear for the Indian mm -hmm. users because like there is a, uh, I would say the generic word transfer, but up to our understanding, if we are transferring from our one wallet to another wallet, that is not a taxable event, but yes, the clarification has to come from the government. So we are, I'm just uh, like communicating this via Bitrefil that uh, you don't have to worry because the like, there are still the representations are going to be to the government and we are like looking for a clarity. The transfer from one wallet to another is not going to be taxable event, but yes, transfer means here the sale exchange or relinquishment if we uh, like uh, read the law. So we are putting the same thing that if we sale only at that point, it's a taxable event. Not if I'm transferring from one wallet of mine to another wallet of mine, that is not a going to be a taxable event. During our conversation in several different scenarios, you said, well, we're not quite clear. The government still hasn't given us like a, a good definition or any clarity. And this law is going into effect in like two months on April 1st. Do you expect the government to provide that clarity before the law goes into effect? 
Uh, I would say uh, on the little bit of it, yes, till the April 2021. But the thing is ki that uh, like after 2022 also, after April 2022. So this is the process because the taxes has to be paid till 31st March 2023. Because in India, the financial is from 1st April 2022 to 30, 31st March. So government can come up to the clarity between any kind of a state. So I am not saying that government, uh, uh, the, because we have like a just 1.5 months, I don't think so that government is ready to put, a, uh, put each and every clarification in his hand. If that would be the case, then government has already given the clarification. So we can see in our, uh, in our opinion, I, we can see a deferment of a tedious provisions by a certain months, like which is applicable from the first July, it can be deferred to like certain months, but we have to wait. I mean, if the government, you know, it'd be too easy, wouldn't it? If the government had a law where they were really clear about things and told you exactly what you should and shouldn't be doing. Right. Exactly. It'd be, it'd be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but but government has to because the thing is ki, that uh, people in India have the tendencies of saying ki, that if the government is not talking about of cryptos, that means uh, of the crypto gains, we don't have to pay the taxes on a crypto gain. That is why government has to bring it because they have to put a taxes on it because they are losing so much of a revenue from the gains. That is why they have just said it is a taxable event, but how the taxable, uh, how the tax is going to be calculated and how, what's the provision that is still unclear. The government is only saying we need taxes. Their intention is we need the revenue. We need the money, which you are earning. We need our share. Do these taxes just apply to retail or does it also apply to like uh, financial institutions that are like trading on a massive scale? So I would say that uh, the government hasn't made any kind of a demarcation between the financial institution and the retail user. That is very a good question that you asked Ricardo, because uh, like if I would say if I'm an exchange, so I am also the aggregator of sale and purchase. So uh, the exchanges are, they haven't, uh, uh, they haven't showed their concern in public, but yes, they are also talking into the like government because how they are going to put a taxes on it because they are also the, if I'm talk about any kind of Indian exchanges, they're also the aggregator. They are just purchasing and selling. So all of their expenses, all of the incidental expenses, the electricity costs, the salaries are not going to be deductible. So they are also in talks with the government, how these expenses will be treated. But as an exchange, they can't talk these kind of things in a public. Um, I have one last question. Um, yeah. I assume that um, people in the crypto in the industry, the, the major stakeholders in the crypto industry in India are still in dialogue with the government, as you mentioned. What are the, you know, you mentioned, you did mention that, you know, you're trying to recommend to the government that, you know, to clarify in certain areas. What other recommendations do you have or are these, you know, players, you know, recommended to the government regarding this crypto law? And, um, for you specifically, how, if you were given the you know, opportunity or, you know, in a hypothetical scenario to draft or to amend this law, how would you, you know, how would you, you know, what changes would you make? So the thing is that I'll uh, try to do a lot of a like easy thing, like uh, there's a clarity uh, of a cost of acquisition, first of all. So I'll like try to put a clarity on the cost of acquisition that, that what are the charges, what are the expenses? that has to be included in the cost of expense, expense cost of acquisitions. What is the clear definition of a transfer that if I'm transferring between the wallets to another wallet, is that a taxable event or not? And what is like, I would say the 1% TDS, how would that would be applicable? Because in India, like that Lawrence has said, sorry, Ricardo, okay, that people uh, from like we are just 1.5 months till 1st April 2022. 1% TDS, provision of 1% TDS will kill the liquidity in the market. If I am the trader, if I am the very the pro trader, then I have to deduct every time 1% TDS on each trade. It will kill the liquidity. So it is direct, indirectly discourages the market. So the government doesn't know that how to put 
regulation also so if i would have to make a draft law then i do all my kind of a research and then i'll put a taxes on it or i would say that whatever you gain just put a pay the 30% of a taxes but i will not uh, like i would not charge any kind of a tds or any kind of a things frankly i would say it's been a very informative uh, episode obviously we're running uh, about an hour now and um is there anything like uh, anything you wanted to say just to, to part with any any kind of uh, information you wanted to tell people any anything about yourself or, or your job or anything you're doing at the moment you wanted people to know about? Uh, I thought that we have already clarified uh, every of the questions that Middle has asked. And if you have any clarification of any questions that you still have, then you can contact us. Uh, we uh, my company name is Quagmire. So you can uh, like contact us anytime and we are here to help you out. Awesome. Okay. Well, cheers. I appreciate it. I think uh, anyone listening is probably going to appreciate this episode. Just if, if you're in India, at least anyway, or at least tax domiciled in India, um, outside of India, maybe less so, but Hey, who knows? It's kind of sometimes interesting to learn about this stuff. I find, I find it interesting anyway, although I'm a bit of a loser. Um, but yeah, I appreciate uh, you coming on. It's been awesome. Thanks as well. Riddle for joining us too. Uh, we've had a stacked house today. Uh, anyone out there listening i hope you've had an awesome time and i hope you have an awesome day month week year and everyone listening just keep on buying bitcoin although consider the implications of that in your country when it comes to tax and uh, keep having a good time take care we love you all and we'll see you all soon